Hey everybody, thank you for listening to another episode of Count Me In. I'm Adam Larson, sitting alongside Mitch Roshong, and our expert guest for this episode is Lorenzo Patelli. Dr. Patelli is an associate professor in the School of Accountancy and interim director of the Institute for Enterprise Ethics in the Daniels College of Business at the University of Denver. He joined us on Count Me In to talk about the fascinating intersection of artificial intelligence and ethics. Mitch, can you tell us a little more about Dr. Patelli and his expertise in AI and ethics? Sure, Adam. Lorenzo Patelli also serves on the editorial board of Advances in Management Accounting and has received a number of awards and honors for his teaching excellence and research. He was recently a part of the Elevate the Ethics of Artificial Intelligence event at the University of Denver and regularly writes on the topic. Dr. Patelli gives listeners a great overview of AI and tells us all why management accountants have the skills necessary to effectively manage the ethical implications of artificial intelligence. Let's go to the discussion. Artificial intelligence is certainly becoming more pervasive in accounting and finance today. Can you please give us an overview of what exactly artificial intelligence is and what it can do for us? Sure. Artificial intelligence is a field uh, of computer science. Um, Particularly, this field is concerned with uh, empowering machines to think, behave, and act like uh, human beings. Um, In other words, uh, to make sure that machines have uh, intelligence. Uh, So several different technologies are developed to uh, replicate uh, the human senses and the ability to uh, draw a uh, conclusion or make judgments uh, based on, uh, on, on the senses. Uh, so for example, humans are able to talk um, and artificial intelligence develop, uh, develops speech recognition tools. Uh, humans are able to move uh, and artificial intelligence develops um, motion planning tools uh, through robotics, for example. Uh, humans are able to see and artificial intelligence develops Uh, computer visions. Uh, Humans are able to learn from experience, so artificial intelligence develops machine learning. Um, And how does artificial intelligence and how does computer science develop these uh, technologies? Um, They use different techniques, um, uh, such as reinforcement learning. Um, So machines learn from executing tasks and make mistakes. Um, And so, for example, the um, LinkedIn notifications that uh, we get from from like a website like LinkedIn, a social network like LinkedIn, are based on reinforcement learning. So uh, if we uh, pay attention to those notifications or not, uh, it's something captured by, ma- by the machine and uh, it triggers a learning process. Um, another technique is deep learning. Um, and deep learning has to do with artificial neural networks um, that are meant to replicate the human brain. Um, So there there is one input and one output with multiple hidden layers in between. Um, And some uh, advanced uh, search uh, engines are based on this technique. Then we have machine learning um, and the ability to learn from data without being being programmed ex ante. So there is a training process uh, where we give data uh, to the machine and the machine uh, is trained and then the machine is capable of uh, predict. Um, So Google Gmail or the automated responses that we um, uh, use in our texting, for example, uh, on our smartphones, those are based on um, versions of machine learning. Um, as I said, then we have computer visions and computer vision tools um, enable um, autonomous vehicles, for example, to um, capture and understand the surrounding or facial recognition on our, again, on our phones. Um, and finally, we have a natural uh, language um, uh, processes and, and with this the machines are capable to understand and react to human language so Alexa or Siri are um, technologies that we use based on uh, NLP so this um, uh, these all these techniques basically uh, in this uh, these methods uh, are used by artificial intelligence to empower machine uh, to examine a phenomenon and initiate a response 
based on the uh, analysis of the phenomenon. And with all of these capabilities, can you explain how AI has already started playing a role in accounting and finance? Yes. Um, well, specifically, management accounting is the practice of judging organizational performance, uh, judging meaning measuring, reporting, and interpreting uh, factors that indicate whether an organization is creating or destroying value. Um, so, at least in theory, artificial intelligence has and will have a remarkable impact uh, on our profession um, because um, exactly we deal with uh, analyzing a phenomenon and uh, uh, producing a response, judging it. Um, but also practically, we know that management accounting is practice relying on uh, machines, computer databases, um, and uh, these machines nowadays deal with a large quantity of data um, in complex environments in which processes and products themselves will uh, more and more run on artificial intelligence. So uh, my view is that artificial intelligence will have a huge impact on accounting and finance. Um, we know that companies are already using um, some artificial intelligence techniques like bots and machine learning to handle data. Now we know that bots are able to enter and categorize data in a fully automated way. Um, we know that something like reinforced learning is assisting companies in internal audit uh, tasks to detect frauds and non-compliance issues. Um, we know that uh, companies are using um, language processing techniques to interpret contracts. Uh, and we can even speculate further and imagine a performance measurement system completely designed based on metrics defined by uh, machine learning techniques. We um, can again imagine uh, initial iteration of budgets uh, prepared through deep learning. And uh, we can envision performance reports and feedback processes obtained uh, through um, uh, language uh, processing techniques. So um, the impact is going to be uh, significant and is going to be uh, widespread in terms of the type of companies uh, who, which are going to be affected and the areas within the companies that are going to be affected. Now, I know another major component of accounting is ethics. So I'm just curious, in your opinion, how do we separate the opportunities from the threats of artificial intelligence when it comes to the ethical application and potentially the negative effects of artificial intelligence and machine learning? Yeah, that's, that's a very, very important question. And uh, strategic finance had uh, published a um, few interesting pieces on this topic. Um, as far as I see it, um, it's important, first of all, to um, have a framework to look at this issue. And I group uh, the unintended consequences uh, of AI in five major buckets. The first one is the impact on uh, the way we, we, we work, uh, so the impact on work. Uh, we do know that professions uh, are gonna be disrupted and jobs will be lost, and uh, economies are actually debating whether artificial intelligence different from technologies in the past are gonna create jobs or destroy jobs primarily. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting, uh, issue uh, from an economic standpoint, and it definitely um, uh, poses some um, ethical considerations. The second bucket is inequality. Um, artificial intelligence has um, a specific um, uh, characteristic relative to uh, technological innovations of the past that it seems that it's going to benefit primarily uh, some, not uh, everyone. Like I talked earlier about the people that uh, compares electricity to artificial intelligence. Well, electricity was uh, beneficial for uh, the overall population. And so we all benefited from the advancement of this technology. There are some concern, again, it's too early to conclude, that um, um, artificial intelligence could be controlled and used uh, for the benefits only of uh, a few uh, section of uh, the population. So that is another thing that uh, we need to be careful about. Uh, it's the inequality that could be created by AI. 
the third bucket is the value transparency. Um, we know very well that the usage of artificial intelligence algorithmic decisions uh, carry uh, a great deal of biases and discriminatory, discriminatory sorry, elements. <clears throat> we all have read um, several instances on news about imperfect systems that simply replicated human biases. Um, so that is another, another area of concern. Um, David Brooks on, you know, editorial uh, on the New York Times um, warns, warns about the uh, ethical consequences of artificial intelligence. So on the one hand, um, he describes how um, we had important improvements in observing and preventing and dealing with very delicate problems like mental health, mental health issues, uh, such as depression and suicides. Um, however, David Brooks himself warns about non-transparent use of this data by states, for example, by government and employers. So value transparency is another area where uh, we could see um, ethical dilemmas caused by artificial intelligence. The fourth bucket is data security and system integrity. Um, so this is very close, it's very connected to management counting uh, because it has to deal with, with data. And, um, and there is a growing concern about the safety uh, and, and security of running and storing data on technologies like blockchain and, and, and also the information sharing. Um, so that's the fourth uh, area that I identify as a, an area of ethical um, implication of AI. And lastly, I think community and social interaction. So uh, artificial intelligence is going to have an effect on how we relate to each other. Um, and uh, for example, the advancement of smart cities um, full of sensors capable of watching our behaviors constantly, um, th that has also uh, social uh, implication in which we can find uh, ethical issues. However, I do believe that management accountants should not be scared uh, by the challenge of distinguishing between opportunities and threats uh, because it is our true competency uh, to uh, analyze uh, risk and to measure risk. Um, and so we have, again, a great opportunity of contributing to the advancement of this technology, which is uh, going to affect various aspects of our lives. So as you referenced earlier, artificial intelligence, these bots, they begin to get smarter. Um, who is ultimately responsible for the decisions that are made by artificial intelligence? Yeah, on this, I have a, um, a more um, straightforward answer, I guess, and which is that the responsibility is also of the human being. Uh, we cannot attribute uh, responsibility to the machine or um, delegate, uh, we should say, the responsibility to the machine. So the key is to build people, uh, meaning to hire, train, and promote uh, people that are competent and principle-driven. Um, I have always loved that the competency is the first ethical standard in the IMA statement of ethical professional practice. Um, so management accountants should not withdraw from early discussion and strategic plans and operational design processes that are ongoing within companies to develop and deploy AI technology. They should use this competency. They should use their competency and contribute to this conversation. So going back to artificial intelligence now, if in the past human beings succeeded by being a great performance um, and, and mostly beating the machine by performing tasks, artificial intelligence, I think, requires humans to be great persons, uh, meaning we need to rediscover and reemphasize what makes us unique. And I think what makes us unique as a human being is the sense of values. Uh, the ability to separate the good and the bad, the right and the wrong, the beautiful and the ugly, the just and the unjust. This is what makes us uniquely human. Um, therefore, to wrap up the answer to your question, uh, two pillars. One, the competency um, that we need to uh, use and contribute uh, with um, and the new competency framework, for example, of the IMA 
uh, goes into this uh, direction when it emphasizes technology and analytical skills. Uh, and the second pillar, which is strong foundation in professional uh, ethics uh, and values. These two pillars are the key, in my opinion, to enhance the responsibility which remains um, uh, in the hands uh, and uh, of human beings. So now I'm curious, I'm going to kind of combine two different questions here, but with artificial intelligence, do you believe then there should be some limitations in the capacity that they are used? And whether it's yes or no, do you believe there should be some kind of governing body or oversight body that will set standards for who can use artificial intelligence and how it is used? Yes, this is a very important question, and unfortunately, the answer is not an easy one. Uh, and I suspect that many attempts will be made, and uh, we will inevitably uh, make mistakes and failure, and we will fail, and we will uh, implement some sort of corrective actions. Um, I am the director of the Institute for Enterprise Ethics at the University of Denver, and we recently hosted a panel discussion on the ethical implications of AI. Um, I was very surprised by the fact that two of, uh, two of the panelists were CEOs of startups um, that they um, completely are based on the development of artificial intelligence um, to different technologies, to different services, but uh, two companies completely dependent on artificial uh, intelligence. And I was very surprised that it said that they both advocated for more uh, regulation on the usage of AI. And um, I asked myself why, you know, CEOs of startups are described oftentimes as um, disruptors and anti-conformist people, rule adverse and um, exactly, you know, people that think beyond the preconceived models that are not necessarily like regulation. Um, the truth is that in the conversation, <clears throat> what was, what became apparent is that um, they need framework to operate. They expose themselves to a lot of risk and, uh, by using these technologies and they welcome uh, more direction um, and more regulation. Um, however, I think that the truth, um, as um, exactly economists argue, is not so much in preventing um, all kinds of risk, but what I hold dear is to prevent inequality, more inequality generated by this uh, artificial intelligence. So I think on this, the government could definitely play a role to make sure that we all benefit from um, this technological innovation. So not just regulation for the sake of regulation, but maybe um, regulation, smart regulation that allows uh, more transparency and more information sharing that would benefit the advancement of this technology uh, for all sections uh, of the population. So it's important to discuss the purpose of this uh, regulation. And then I think the board of directors have a, an incredibly important role in making sure that organizations uh, are concerned about the ethical implications of AI and they put in place systems um, and, and um, help foster cultures uh, within private uh, organization or, or public organization uh, where there is a uh, sensitivity to these issues. So we do have um, information about uh, positive trends in this sense. The Wall Street Journal just reported that uh, venture capitals and incubators have initiated important changes uh, within startups. Uh, and these important changes are uh, promoting code of ethics that guide um, artificial intelligence startups operations, uh, tools to explain how artificial intelligence make decisions, and lastly, best practices to communicate and gather, gather feedback about artificial intelligence output. So we see that there is a growing awareness of the importance of getting the board involved uh, in this conversation. This has been Count Me In, IMA's podcast, providing you with the latest perspectives of thought leaders from the accounting and finance profession. If you like what you heard and you'd like to be counted in for more relevant accounting and finance education, visit IMA's website at www.imanet.org.